Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz and today another detail packed forecast update coming your way. We've got a lot to be getting through today including some showers and storms expected to develop across southeastern Queensland tonight, a round of potentially severe thunderstorms across New South Wales throughout the remainder of this week. We're also going to touch on a tropical update as well and take a look at a strong cold front expected to bring some wild weather to the southwest corner of Western Australia. All of that plus more coming up in today's with a forecast. If you are brand new to the channel please consider subscribing, your support lately has been much appreciated. So let's start things off over in New South Wales and Queensland. We do have some significant weather now on the forecast for both states, but we'll start things over in the northeast of New South Wales and the southeast of Queensland, where the severe weather is going to be located tonight. So you can see here on this forecast, we are expecting some showers and storms to continue to fire up in the afternoon and evening hours probably from about midday onwards, to be honest, across the northeast of New South Wales and into the southeastern pocket of Queensland as the surface trough sweeps across the northeastern corner of New South Wales and creates a favourable environment for showers and storms to develop. Now, I'm not expecting severe thunderstorms out the wazoo tonight. There could still be a couple of severe cells north of Stranthorpe and up towards Toowoomba based off this forecast here. However, if we contrast that to the Axis G3, which is the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast model, and the GFS forecast, which is a different forecast model altogether, you can see that the Eastern Bev really is kind of on the upper echelon of overestimating this sort of weather system here that's going to be delivering showers and storms to New South Wales and southeastern Queensland tonight. Now that's not to say that we're not going to be seeing potentially severe thunderstorms. There are favourable conditions, especially in the and um, the upper level environment uh, for thunderstorms to be developing around the Toowoomba, Warwick and Stranthorpe area. However, the chances of them going severe uh, left, right and centre doesn't look to be too high at this time. It also looks like Brisbane and the Gold Coast for the most part are going to miss out in the showers and storms. They could be getting a couple of light showers later on this afternoon and evening, but the heaviest of rainfall should be uh, isolated out towards Warwick and Toowoomba or somewhere in this general area here very close to both communities. Um, it'll also be quite heavy out towards Moree and Lightning Ridge. We could be seeing some heavy rainfall out there uh, later on tonight from these thunderstorms, but the rainfall out there will be re uh, reasonably isolated, so there won't be too many places picking up the heavy falls, if that makes sense. And then outside of Grafton, Yamba and Coffs Harbour, we could also be seeing some significant rain accumulations out in the more mountainous areas out towards Glen Innes and Tenterfield. We could be seeing some good rainfall out there but we will keep an eye on things. All in all nothing really to be worrying about, nothing really to be concerned about through this forecast this afternoon and evening, especially considering the forecast that I've just shown you the Eastern Rebirth is the absolute worst case scenario of things. So it's likely going to be about 10 times better than what this forecast is presenting but at the end of the day we're still expecting thunderstorms and thunderstorms in this environment and this time of the year in southeastern Queensland they could go severe at a moment's notice so it's always good to take a look at said worst case scenario just to be safe rather than to be sorry. So later on this afternoon and evening, those storms will ease off pretty much by around 6 or 7 p.m. as well. They will not be hanging around at all. A couple of showers will still be along the coastline, stretching up from about Coffs Harbour right through the Gold Coast and even up into the Sunshine Coast as well, making it up towards about Noosa or Maroochydore by early tomorrow morning. A few light showers are possible there. And then tomorrow afternoon, the forecast gets quite interesting again. Now, it's a pretty different forecast from yesterday as well. There's still the severe thunderstorm risk for the southeastern corner of Queensland, but it's way further inland now this time out towards St George and Roma and I did kind of see this coming in yesterday's forecast update and that's why I was a little bit uncertain still with yesterday's forecast but it definitely looks like the risk of severe thunderstorms has now shifted out of the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area at least in the immediate corners of southeastern Queensland and extended a little bit further inland towards Chinchilla, Roma, St George, Thalon and then into Moree and Lightning Ridge in the northeast of New South Wales. That's not to say that we're not expecting thunderstorms and showers across the southeastern corner of Queensland. We are expecting them to fire up tomorrow afternoon and evening as well, especially around the Toowoomba, uh, Bow Desert and Ipswich area. Even Brisbane could be seeing a couple of showers as well in the late afternoon and evening hours, uh, but we're not expecting severe thunderstorms out there. Just a couple of drops of rainfall, potentially up to 10 millimetres of the stuff around the Brisbane area, but nothing too crazy. The severe thunderstorms will be much further inland. You can see out here we're expecting one or two pretty strong cells, just looking at this forecast here, in the north of New South Wales and the south of Queensland, so we will keep a very close eye on these cells out here tomorrow afternoon afternoon and if you do live out in this sort of uh, pocket of Queensland. I'm pretty sure this is outside of the cold fields and further into the more agricultural districts around St George, but correct me if I'm wrong. If you do live out here, it's certainly going to be worth keeping an eye on the radar tomorrow afternoon because it looks like these thunder cells here are at around 2 to 3, maybe 4 p.m. could be pretty nasty indeed. So keep a very close eye on things. These storms certainly do look like they mean business and it will only take one or two severe thunderstorms to cause some significant problems out in this part of Queensland. Typical weather for this time of the year, but it is still a pretty interesting forecast and a massive back 
flip on what we were expecting yesterday as well. You can also see between the other forecast models, I mean, the GFS is kind of useless for thunderstorms, but the Axis G3 is still pretty uncertain with all of this stuff here. And that's why the Bureau of Meteorology has only been calling for some light showers out here and there. And I think that's really underbaking the forecast at this time. For the most part, a lot of places are going to miss out and they are going to be disappointed at the lack of rainfall or thunderstorm activity, especially as you get further north up towards the Sunshine Coast, Kingaroy, Roma and Charleville. But along the Queensland and New South Wales border stretching from Lightning Ridge right out to the Gold, uh, the Gold Coast, rather, I think it is going to be pretty interesting on both nights, Tuesday and Wednesday, so tonight and tomorrow night. Certainly going to be worth keeping an eye on things and certainly going to be worth keeping uh, yourself prepared for potentially severe thunderstorms, especially if you are further inland in that zone. Now that is a very overcomplicated look at these thunderstorms and showers that are expected to blow up. And there's certainly going to be some interesting stuff as well. And we will, will revisit it tomorrow. I think how they behave tonight is going to be a very good indicator for how they will behave on Wednesday. Again, I'm not expecting severe thunderstorms out of the wazoo uh, on both nights tonight and tomorrow night, but there is still the chance of potentially severe thunderstorms on both nights tonight and tomorrow night. That's enough for southeastern Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales. We'll revisit Queensland in just a few minutes, but I want to give New South Wales some love just real quickly. So they have got a pretty good run of thunderstorms and potentially severe ones as well over the next five days or so. You can see it here, a lot of low pressure areas currently extending across the state. We're expecting a low pressure trough to develop across the western half of the state. And that's going to bring showers and storms tonight and into tomorrow night across the western half of said state and some very warm temperatures as well. We're expecting temperatures and daytime back to go close to 40 degrees today, tomorrow, and into Wednesday as well. Now, there aren't as many thunderstorms or showers expected, but we could still be seeing some isolated pulse thunderstorms in similar fashion, but a little bit less to, uh, to or to a lesser degree from what we're expecting tonight to develop on Wednesday night, especially into the more central parts of New South Wales between Griffith and Cobar. And then on Thursday as well, we're expecting pretty much the same thing, some thunderstorms developing around that Griffith, Cobar, Dubbo sort of area and, uh, after a very warm day indeed. Now, Thursday gets into interesting because we're seeing a low pressure system here develop offshore from South Australia, which is going to track through South Australia, or at least parallel to the coastline, and drag in a lot of moisture from northern parts of South Australia, the Northern Territory, parts of Queensland, and then into New South Wales and Victoria, bringing showers and thunderstorms Thursday night and into Friday morning. The rainfall is actually going to be uh, light to moderate across central parts of New South Wales, very welcome indeed for agricultural communities by Friday morning. We could be seeing rainfall accumulations overnight to the 9am on Friday, up to around 50 or 20 millimetres just from steady consistent rainfall that's going to be developing across inland parts of New South Wales. Unpleasant weather but perfect for farmers and perfect for those agricultural communities. One last soaking before uh, summer rolls around, but get a load of this. Take a look at the heavy showers and storms that are expected to be to be developing in the Victorian side of things. Once this uh, sort of cold front low pressure area gets jammed up against those mountains, we're going to be seeing some pretty high rainfall accumulations. So around Shepherd and Albury up towards Wagga Wagga, uh, Young and Orange uh, in the New South Wales side of things, we're going to be seeing some very heavy rainfall accumulations Friday morning and into the early Friday afternoon. Even Canberra could be looking at up to 25 millimetres by Friday afternoon. So some good rainfall accumulations certainly look to be likely now uh, throughout Thursday night into early Friday morning across parts of New South Wales but that's not even the worst of it because on the back side of this low pressure system as that heat really does warm up across parts of New South Wales we're going to see another frontal system develop uh, outside of the Victoria New South Wales border into the New South Wales side of things if that makes sense and then across towards Hay and Griffith, Hillston, Ivanhoe those sort of communities we're going to see a line of powerful severe thunderstorms develop Friday night. Now I am very certain about this forecast even though it is is now 72 hours away from these severe thunderstorms firing up, but just with how uh, these thunderstorms look to be behaving on the forecast models, I am dead set certain that Friday afternoon we're going to see a powerful line of thunderstorms develop um, about here in New South Wales, and then go on to impact communities such as Hillston, Griffith, Urina, Wagga Wagga, and then up towards... Um, Coba and even uh, further towards the coast such as Dubbo Parks, Orange and Young, those sort of areas we'd be seeing potentially severe thunderstorms develop as a squall line races across the New South Wales state and then it reaches the coastal areas by around 5 to 8 p.m. local time, probably a little bit later than that, probably about 8 to 11 p.m. local time on Friday night. Still bringing showers and storms to uh, coastal communities such as Wollongong and Sydney but to a much lesser degree than the severe thunderstorms that we're expecting in this general area here. So just the heads up, if you live here in New South Wales you have 
have some severe thunderstorm action coming through on Friday. Again, it's not something that many people are talking about right now. It's still about three days away, and you can also see that the Axis G3 really doesn't have anything initialized on the forecast. They do have some pretty nasty cells on the forecast for the, for the Victorian side of things, Friday afternoon and evening, but the Eastern Rebirth is going how on this forecast here, and I'm very certain that the Eastern Rebirth is going to be an accurate forecast model this time. Certainly something worth watching at this time. And let's just recap on rainfall accumulations just over that 36 hour period from Thursday afternoon to Saturday morning. You can see here rainfall accumulations across parts of Victoria are going to be very high outside of Mansfield and Omeo up towards 70, 80 millimetres of the stuff. That's totally plausible as well. Some good accumulations down towards Melbourne up to 15 millimetres of pretty steady consistent rainfall by Friday morning into the early afternoon. And even the Victorian coastline throughout Thursday and Friday morning up towards 30 or 40 millimetres possible down there. Very welcome rainfall indeed. Onto the New South Wales side of things outside of Canberra and into the foothills of the Kosciuszko range, uh, the Blue Mountains rather, <laughs> really getting muddled on my geography over here, up towards 50 or 60 millimetres of rainfall, totally plausible again, and under the right thunder cell we could be seeing accumulations much higher than that, so we will keep a very close eye on things. Uh, once you get further inland towards Griffith and Hillston, the rainfall is still there between sort of 10 and 20 millimetres, but it does become a little bit more uncertain, so uh, things can change on this forecast here, and it's kind of going to be a played by ear and have a look at what's coming through on the radar for these communities in the true inland New South Wales. And unfortunately, as you get out towards Broken Hill, Mildura, and that's uh, those sort of communities, the rainfall is way too unpredictable to reasonably forecast. And unfortunately, it looks like more likely than not, those communities are going to miss out on decent rainfall. What they will not be missing out on, though, and what's driving this really big run of severe thunderstorms potentially through New South Wales and Victoria on Thursday is a run of extremely warm temperatures for this time of the year, scorching hot up towards 43, 44 degrees throughout parts of South Australia, even down towards Adelaide, they're expecting to go up into the mid 30s for the first time this summer on Thursday. And then Friday, it's going to be really warm as well. No relief overnight. Melbourne going down to 19 degrees on Thursday night and Friday morning. It's going to be boiling hot uh, there. Mildura, no better as well, up towards uh, 24 by Friday morning and then into the mid 30s by early Friday afternoon and into the high 30s for parts of New South Wales and early 40s for parts of Queensland by Friday afternoon. It's going to be a warm one indeed. But thankfully on the backside of this low pressure area, it is going to be much, much cooler. And that southerly change will be very welcome Friday afternoon, bringing an end to a very short lived heat wave, but a very intense one for this time of the year. Like I said, 43, 44, that's pretty unusual into the southern half of South Australia down towards Wyala and Port Augusta for this time of the year. Um, as you get further out towards Cooperpedia, Udendada, Mintipi, that's pretty stock standard for this time of the year, but that is certainly very, very warm for parts of South Australia and certainly something that they are going to keep a close eye on. It's going to be a warm one, that's for sure. Rainfall accumulations as well. We won't be uh, neglecting Tasmania. They're expecting some good falls on Thursday evening and into Friday morning as well as this low-pressure area moves through, especially into Friday morning, rather. There's going to be a strong low-pressure system, so expect some big tides on Friday and some pretty big waves as well. The damaging wind threat doesn't look to be there at this time, and the severe thunder storms across Tasmania don't look awfully likely either, but some good rainfall is possible there. Much needed as well for Tasmania. They're screaming out for a bit of rainfall as well, so that is fantastic to see. And just before I end off this thunderstorm discussion, I'd also like to go up into southeastern Queensland once again and talk about Friday because we do have the chance of thunderstorms, probably not severe thunderstorms, but thunderstorms on Friday and into Saturday morning as well. They'll be more sort of inland out towards Roma and Charleville, but we could still be seeing a few cells fire up around the Toowoomba sort of area on Friday before a break in the thunderstorms for at least a good couple of days. I mean, I'm not seeing anything fire up on the forecast here for a good week or so until Thursday the 24th of October, so we will keep a close eye on things, but it looks like for the most part, they're going to get a bit of a break over in the southeast of Queensland after about Thursday or Friday. And it looks like thunderstorms are going to move out of Queensland and the rainfall is going to pipe down a little bit for Queensland after some very heavy falls were reported along the central coast outside of Mackay up to 118 millimetres over the past 48 hours at Clive's Dam, which is a massive accumulation for October outside of Mackay. So certainly some good rainfall there. A little bit of rainfall expected up into the far north of Queensland as well outside of cans over the next 10 days, but the real tropical rainfall is, and this leads us nicely into the next part of the video, concentrated around Darwin and the top end of WA. It is going to be pretty wet up there over the next 10 days, and it's just from consistently firing up thunderstorms over said 10-day period. Uh, every night they're getting thunderstorms fire up pretty consistently at this time, which is fantastic to see. The wet season is not far away from breaking, and that is a true sight of the thunderstorms that are blowing up over the Northern Territory and parts of WA as well. Anyway, so basically does it for a tropical forecast, but we're not 
not done with the video just yet. We've got to go and give Southwest and Western Australia a bit of love as well. Overnight, a cold front blew through it. It blew through at about 3 or 4 p.m. last night, and it brought some cold temperatures and some pretty unpleasant rainfall to parts of the southwest of WA. Much needed rainfall, however, but not too much was reported. My gauge has picked up eight millimeters over the past 24 hours. Again, a much needed eight millimeters, but unfortunately, a lot of other places have picked up much less uh, than that. Let me know what you've picked up in your rain gauge as well. But we do have a little bit more rainfall on the way. You can see here Wednesday, a cold front is expected to develop across the southwest, impacting communities between Durian Bay and Kalbarri, including Geraldton by late Wednesday morning and early Wednesday afternoon. The showers beginning to pipe up across the Perth area by late Wednesday afternoon. You can see extending down in towards the southwest capes by said late Wednesday afternoon and a few showers and storms are also possible there. Unfortunately it looks like the bulk of the rainfall is going to be in the north. Perth and the southwest for the most part do miss out. This is a weird low pressure system especially for this time of the year and the peak rainfall accumulations which will most likely be between 10 and 20 millimeters look to be falling around the Kalbarri, Geraldton and Durian Bay area. Perth can really only expect about 5 to 10 millimeters from this and into the weed belt are much more miserable and a couple of millimetres expected. The northern wheat belt, however, out towards Dalwallanu and Kalani could pick up some good rainfall, so again, that would be very welcome there, but it looks like it stops at Great Eastern Highway, and it also stops at Kalgoorlie, but that's not to say that inland communities in the wheat belt, especially around Ravensthorpe, Lake Grace, uh, Lake King, Newdigate, that sort of area could pick up some good rainfall as well. I mean, take a look at this, we're expecting a line of severe thunderstorms to fire up Wednesday afternoon, stretching from Bremer Bay through Ravensthorpe, Norseman, Kalgoorlie, and then deep into the goldfields out towards Laverton from a low pressure area and a low pressure trough that's going to move through and bring some severe thunderstorms and potentially severe weather to communities such as Salmon Gums, Esperance, Cocklebitty uh, and Israelite Bay. So some good severe thunderstorm activity is possible Wednesday night into early Thursday morning but it looks like by Thursday morning by sunrise on Thursday the rainfall will have all but disappeared from WA confined to just a few showers stretching along the WA coast between Perth and Durian Bay and that low pressure area will then go on to impact the east of the state as we have just spent the last 15 minutes discussing. Certainly in, in an interesting weather forecast rather it's going to be a big week or a big end to the week rather for the weather world uh, across Australia it's certainly going to be quite interesting indeed but that is all for me today thank you so much for watching the video to this point the support lately has been much appreciated and like I said at the start we're just 500 subscribers away from 20,000 a massive milestone certainly much bigger than I thought this network would ever get to uh, reaching but it is fantastic that this page is now one of the largest weather pages for accurate and reliable weather information across Australia which is just so great to see and I'm honoured to be able to present the weather to such a large audience every single day and it's something that I have no plans of stopping anytime soon but yeah that is all for me today thank you so much for watching the video to this point a special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now I could not run this show without them and that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye